Back when I was in the fifth grade, my friends and I loved to play on the monkey bars. We wouldn't play on these monkey bars like any other kids, but we'd try to do these crazy acrobatics on them, jumping from the third bar to the seventh bar and trying to just do all these crazy flips and tricks. But I remember one particular time. This time, I stepped up to the monkey bars, got up, and tried to swing for the third monkey bar, skipping for the first and second. When I did this, instead of latching on to the third one, I ended up grabbing onto the air, and seconds later, I fell down to the ground. Turns out, I had the wind knocked out of me, and I was taken to the emergency room. Here, I found out that I had 14 fractures in my back, and that I'd have a month off from school. Now, this is almost any fifth grader's dream. A month off, and all I got to do was stay home and play Nintendo DS. But I also spent a lot of time thinking about my situation and my health. I was grateful that I was going to heal, but I realized that there was an alternative, and it was really hard to ignore. 5.4 million people in the United States are victims of some degree of paralysis. And over 85% of them are unemployed, meaning that they're not able to have access to the greatest medical technologies that they need to stay relevant in terms of being able to carry out day-to-day -day tasks. With this in mind, with a couple of friends, I spearheaded efforts to create a brain-actuated exoskeleton. Now, brain-actuated exoskeleton, that seems like a mouthful. Let's break it down. So the idea is that we have this robotic exoskeleton that goes on a physical therapy patient or a paralyzed patient that allows them to control their motions based on just their electrical activity from their brain. Now, you may be thinking, what is this brain reading device? It sounds like science fiction. Well, the way we do this is through a powerful idea in computer science called machine learning. Machine learning is this idea that we can teach computers a specific generic task. Now, I said specific and generic. How does that work? It's specific in that the machine knows only how to do that one particular task, but it knows how to handle a variety of different input cases. And there are two main ways we can teach a computer this specific task. The first is called supervised learning. And it's a lot like how humans read books. When we read a book, we try to understand the underlying motifs and download that data into our system and try to, uh, try to uh, analyze the different patterns within it. And when we do this, machines, on the other hand, are able to t take a look at large sets of data and understand how these underlying patterns exist in this data set. The second is called unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning is much like how humans explore. Like Christopher Columbus or Ponce de Leon, the computer is placed in this virtual environment where you can give the computer certain rewards or negative reinforcements to understand how it will behave in this space. The computer over time learns what is good and what is bad based on the reinforcement that it gets. So with this in mind, using a supervised learning approach, our team built an EEG-based machine learning algorithm. Now, what this does is it takes the electrical potentials from the brain and, under and understands the underlying patterns within them so that we're able to execute different motions within the body. Now, being able to do this allows for empowerment and access on a large scale. It allows for access because we took a $50,000 exoskeleton and brought it down to just $600. And furthermore, on top of this, we're bringing about another $50 version in the near future just based on this amazing machine learning based technology. Secondly, machine learning is also making massive strides in terms of natural language processing. Natural language processing is this idea that we can start talking to computers and having natural interactions with them. So this is much like Siri or Google Now on your phones. What this does is it allows us to carry out conversations 
and I think that this has massive implications in education. A project that I started with a couple of friends is called A-List Education. A-List Education allows for students to converse naturally with an online tutor. What this allows students to do is it actually allows them to ask questions much, that, much like of those that they would ask a real tutor. For example, I could ask the textbook, what is the complex number i? And the textbook would be able to respond to me that i is the square root of negative 1. But on top of just answering these fact-based questions, the system is also able to understand how much the student has learned. So at one point, when the student thinks that they are done, the system will go back and ask them questions. When the system asks these questions, the system is actually assessing how much the student has learned throughout the process. And if they haven't understood the concept fully, the, the system provides the student supplementary material in the form of voice, much like a real tutor does. And what this is allowing for is empowerment. We're empowering people all over the world to have access to a quality education, no matter their background and no matter where they live. Lastly, I think machine learning has massive implications also on a more global level. Here we see a map of a hurricane forecast system, and you can see it's a complete mess. This past hurricane season for, for us was one of the most, was one of the worst that we've seen in a long time. And wanting to understand these sort of interactions of how climate science works, I tried to apply a machine learning approach to hurricanes. And the way I did this is by creating a system that allows for intensity and forecast analysis so that we know where the hurricane is at any given time and what its particular intensity would be. By knowing this information, we can inform, we can inform people that need to make their decisions of the various different types of implications of the hurricane that's impending. On top of this, it's important to note that when I started this project, I had zero climate science experience. Other than some quick research that I did on how these systems work, all I, all I knew was that there was this data set and that I needed to find out where the hurricane was going to be at any given time. Using this su supervised learning approach, I understood that machine learning helped me be timely in that it allowed me to create a system on a subject that I had no experience about in the past. This shows that machine learning can also serve to inspire others. Through various projects and various endeavors, we can inspire the nation's youth to pursue computer science and to pursue these activities. But on top of that, I ask the audience to contribute to data sets, because every time that there is new data available, we're increasing our, our generalization of these machine learning systems. Furthermore, I'd like to end with the fact that machine learning is allowing for us to have an amazing and empowering future, and it's allowing us to talk about projects and ideas that'll help change the world. Thank you.